Hello everyone and welcome to the channel where we talk about all things trucking and give interesting tips and tricks for drivers just like yourself. My name is Joko and in today's video we'll talk about Peterbilt's biggest sleeper truck cabin available. The 2025 Peterbilt 579 model. This particular model has the epic 80 inch ultra loft package which means it's Peterbilt's biggest sleeper available. I just wanted to thank our friends here at JX Truck Center in Bolingbrook, Illinois for lending me this beautiful truck so we can all enjoy it inside and out. I'll put a link to their website down in the description if you want to check them out. But now let's jump into the video straight ahead. Starting off at the front of the 2025 Peterbilt 579, we can tell that there has been uh, quite a few changes actually aerodynamically and cosmetically speaking on the outside, as well as some advanced technology advancements on the inside that we'll take a look at uh, in a little bit. But overall on the outside, you can definitely tell that this is a 2025 year model compared to the 2024 year models. Starting off at our top, we have our sunshade there, as you can see with our LED marker lights on top, a one piece windshield, as you can see, these wind deflectors right here, which also help shape the air around the cabin, which in turn again improves the aerodynamics. We have a slightly narrower, it seems, uh, hood with leading lines towards the front fascia of the hood as well, as you can see. Overall, the hood has received uh, also a cosmetic update. As you can see, it has a more aggressive style to it. We have a sleeker and more aggressive front grille design here of the new 579 model. It looks more like a shield compared to the uh, previous model where it looks more oval, I would say. Right in the center, we have our Peterbilt emblem right here. This is the second biggest upgrade that I would say here in the front is our headlight designs. We have a more aggressive and more dynamic headlight design on the 2025 year models, as you can see. LED headlights, but incandescent turn signals, which I think they could have made these LEDs as well. Moving further down, we have our refreshed front bumper, which also again adds to the more aggressive and dynamic style of the 2025 year model. We have a rubberized kind of extension here to the front to improve on the aerodynamics and cut out holes for our front recovery hooks here as well. But overall, the front end of the 1025 Peterbilt looks really aggressive and I kind of like it. If you enjoy these types of reviews of vehicles that I do, I also have another channel where I do car reviews. And I would really appreciate it if you checked it out and you know hit the subscribe button there as well. Uh, that will mean a lot to me. I just started the other channel, so your support will mean a lot. Looking at it from the side, we can tell that this is Peterbilt's biggest cabin available. Again, it's the 80 inch ultra loft double bed bunk sleeper, which again provides the ultimate driver comfort for one, even for two drivers. Now, starting off at our top, we have our window for our top bunk. At the bottom, we have the window for our bottom bunk. And right below that, we have an access door for the storage compartment underneath the bottom bunk. If you want to access that, you got to use the keys and you simply open it like that and now you have access to the storage compartment here underneath the bottom bunk and the cool thing is it goes all the way through to the other side so that if you want to store even longer items you can do so if you want to close it you can simply give it a good push and it will lock into place moving forward we have our 579 epic emblem here on this side we have our driver door which has this very nice actually you know, close and opening sound to it. But a beef that I have with the 2025 uh, Peterbilt is the side view mirror. Not only has it been actually made smaller, but it's been also been cut on the outer corner here to even reduce visibility for that matter. Now, as a former trucker, we all want to have the best visibility possible. And this actually reduces the visibility of the driver inside the vehicle which again is not optimal, but I get it. It's to improve aerodynamics, but at what cost really? Moving further down, we have our sidestep uh, fairings here, as well as our bigger fairing here that covers our fuel tank. As you know from our previous video, the 2024 year model, you can actually open them. And uh, I'm glad Peterbilt stuck to that design. It has small latches here on the inside that you simply push inward on one side and on the other. And now you can have access to your batteries, your uh, air tanks here, as well as your the fuel reservoir here as well. And if you want to open up the rear fairing, you can also do that as well. You simply find the latches here. You push on this side, you push on that side, and that will actually give you access to your fuel tank. Not that you need access to your fuel tank, but it's actually a good feature to have. If you want to close these, you simply push them up into place like that and like that very nice 
In addition to that, the side view here of our front part of the truck has also been addressed. There was a major issue in previous models and that was the lack of signaling lights. That's why in the 2025 year model, we actually have a LED turn signal light right here to the side because in older models, they were missing a turn signal to the side. So whenever you had somebody following you to the side and you had your turn signal on, they weren't able to see that you actually have a turn signal on until they pass you or if they were right behind you. This light will now enable you know, people driving next to you see that you have a turn signal on so they can either move uh, past you faster or slow down or move out of your way if you need to move over. In addition to that, we have the Peterbilt emblem right here with a very nice and aerodynamic bend here to the side of the hood, which adds a little bit to that aggressive and elegant style as well. Now, this particular model has drum brakes in the front and in the back uh, rear axles, which I believe is a customer request. Now, I believe that whenever you're building your Peterbilt models, you can select online whether you want a you know drum brakes or disc brakes in the front or in the back. And this particular model has already been sold. Maybe the customer selected drum brakes in the front and drum brakes in the back. Honestly, I don't know, but this is what we have here. Anyway, moving towards the back of the cabin, we have these huge wind deflectors here, as you can see, and they make the cabin look even bigger than what it actually is. And they span from pretty much here towards the back. And again, these are to improve the aerodynamics and the fuel efficiency of the truck even more. But moving towards the back of the vehicle, there aren't that many changes that have been implemented in the you know, rear of the 2025 year model. It's, it's a work truck, it's meant to be used and abused anyway, so, but let's just go over some of the features that you get. Starting off in the middle, we have our antenna, as you can see, with two work lights, LED work lights here underneath. We have our two handles that you can hold on whenever you're climbing the catwalk or whenever you know, you're securing your airline and the electrical line with a spring to this uh, handle here as well. Right below that, we have these two depressurizing cabin components right here, which are simply cutouts in the actual cabin so that whenever you close the door, you, the air movement has to go somewhere, you know, so you don't actually hurt your ears when you're sitting on the inside because Peterbilt's have actually very well insulated and pressurized cabins, which is a good thing. Right below that, we have our cabin shock absorbers as well as our cabin airbags, as you can see, for our soft cabin ride. And, uh, and a very convenient... You don't have enough. <laughs> you, you'll be in the video. <laughs> you actually have plenty of space between the tire and your fuel tank so that whenever you're fueling up, you have plenty of space here to put the fuel nozzle and you know you don't have to go through obstacles to get here, which is very nice and convenient. Again, you have two steps here for our catwalk, a fairly wide catwalk as we can see, and our airline and our electrical connections are here on the kind of like the frame instead of on the cabin. Moving towards the back, we have our blacked out mud flaps as well as our LED brake lights and LED reverse light. But moving towards the passenger side of the vehicle, there aren't that many differences when it comes to the overall shape or aerodynamics of the truck, but there are a few cosmetic differences that I think make a big difference. Uh, but first, let's start off here with our fuel tank. You have very good access to the fuel tank here uh, whenever you're fueling without any major obstacles, but you are lacking the sidestep here for our catwalk access. As you can see here on the top, we have our top window for our top bunk. There is no window for a bottom bunk except you get a small vent which again I don't know why you would have a vent and not a regular window. Anyway maybe that's how the customer ordered it. I don't know. And what you're also noticing is that we are missing the access door for our storage compartment which I feel like is a huge bummer. Again I don't know if the customer ordered the truck like that, if it makes a difference in the price or not. I feel like this is a major inconvenience because if you stored something deeper on, from the other side, the only way to access it would be to climb up top, you know, lift the bottom bed and then access it like that, which is again, time consuming and inconvenient, like I said. But let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm really curious to see, to hear your thoughts. Uh, moving on, we have the 579 Epic package here. Moving on to our passenger side door. Again, we have a very nice soft, you know, thumb here of our door. We have a mirror facing down here towards our step, as well as our side view mirror here on this side as well. You can open up the fairings here on this side, just like you can open them up from the driver's side. And you simply push on the latch just like this. 
which will open up the side fairing. Now you have access to your DPF system here on this side. And if you open up the rear, you will have access again to your fuel tank. Again, not that you need access to your fuel tank, but you have the option, which is very nice. To close it, you simply push it into place, this side and that side, as simple as that. Now let's just pop the hood and see what we're working with in the 579-2025 Peterbilt. To pop the hood, you unlatch it on this side and you simply do the same thing on the other side. And once you have unlocked it, you simply pull on this here and lower it nice and easy into place. On the passenger side of the engine bay compartment, there isn't that much to talk about actually. You know, we still get the same layout that we saw in the 2024 year model. You still get your windshield washer fluid here on this side. You have access to your turbos, to your alternators. Uh, the coolant reservoir again has been moved towards the back of the engine bay compartment right below our windshield. And you have access to that, you know, from the driver's side. But overall, like I said, there isn't much to talk about on this side. So let's just go to the driver's side. On the driver's side, this is actually the side where we can have a little bit more fun and give a little bit more details. Okay, so first of all, the 2025 year models uh, 579 come in two engine configurations. We have a Packard and we have a Cummins. The Packard comes in a MX-13 engine configuration with, you know, with up to 485 horsepower. You can get it in a Packard PO transmission or a 13-speed manual, whereas the Cummins side of the engine specs we have a CX-15 uh, engine here with up to 505 horsepower and it also comes in an Eaton automatic transmission both engines actually provide a very good option for you know for any new driver but I'm actually curious to hear what you guys think between the differences you know Cummins or Packard what would be your choice let me know down in the comments <laughs> In addition to that, this side is where you can have more access to even more items. Like I said before, we have the coolant reservoir access here uh, from here, your air intake filters, as well as your you know, fuel water separator, your gearbox and whatnot. So if you want to work on the truck, you have easy access for all of that. Now, if you want to close the hood, for those of you that have never driven a Peterbilt, you can simply go ahead and push the hood, you know, up front to close it. You, you gotta put it in a unlocked position, you know, the shock absorber, and you simply lift up this red element here, which unlocks the shock absorber. So now you can actually go ahead and push up the hood so you can lock it in place. And you ease it in. And don't forget to lock down your latches. Hey, real quick, 99% of you are not subscribed. So I'll just ask you to hit that like and subscribe button below if you like these types of videos and enjoy our content. Now back to the video. Virtually speaking, there aren't that many differences between the 2025 and the 2024 year models, which is why, you know, pretty much what you're about to see here on the interior is about the same that we saw in the 2024 year models mainly because this is the space that you get and that's what they're working with. But what you do get is a better sound insulation in the 2025 year model, which in turn means that you get a quieter cabin actually. Now there have also been some updates uh, in the advanced features in your driver digital dashboard, which people will claim that they have improved on the overall driver experience when it comes to their you know digital dashboard. Overall, you get enough storage here for one, even two drivers, and you also get enough outlets to charge anything you want at you know any place in the truck that you want so without further ado let's just jump into some of the convenience features that you get with the 579 model starting off with our passenger side you actually get a glove box compartment here in the 2025 year model just like you did in the previous models it's big enough to fit your owner's manual maybe you know a bill of ladings or some paperwork in there if you close that up you will see that we have a flat design of the dashboard in front of our passenger seat with the two vents you know staring right at the passenger seat Moving towards the center of our dashboard, we have the overall dashboard tilted towards our driver to give the driver a better access and better view of the overall components of the dashboard. We have our traction control, you know, our sleeper lights, as well as uh, buttons to control your fifth wheel, you know, to slide it back and forth, lock in your tandems, and obviously your parking brake and your trailer brake uh, right here. 
and right next to that we have our radio we also have our climate control unit right here below the climate control we have a little bit of a storage compartment which you know you can put down your phone it has this rubberized uh, bottom right here so that you don't get any clattering of things around which i feel like i wish it was better attached to the bottom because it, i just simply pulled it out but anyway on both sides you get 12 volt outlets right here as well if you want to plug in different things Right behind that you get two cup holders with a little bit of a rubberized uh, you know, compartment here as well. Moving towards the driver's seat here, obviously you have very good access to your trailer brakes as well as your interior luminance brightness here as well and the engine brake of the truck. When it comes to the driver experience, again you get this huge completely digital instrument cluster here for our driver which is fully customizable just like we've seen in the previous models. And this is where Peterbilt claimed to have, you know, made some of the advanced technology updates, especially for the pre-trip and post-trip inspections to give the driver a better overview of, you know, potential hazards or things to pay attention to, I guess. Again, I don't really know much about this system because I've never driven a Peterbilt and I don't have any over the road experience, especially with a digital dashboard truck. So if any of you know anything of that, you know, let us know down in the comments now the steering wheel again you know it's a comfortable steering wheel you also get physical buttons here on your steering wheel to control mostly your digital dashboard items here as well as your cruise control here on the left hand side and the media control here on the right hand side of the steering wheel Behind the steering wheel on the left hand side obviously is your turn signals. On the right hand side is your gear selector for your uh, automatic transmission. This particular model has a Eaton uh, automatic transmission and you simply put it into gear by turning and twisting the lever right here. And you can adjust actually the engine brake by pulling it up or down. To the left hand side we have our light control module and right below that we also have control of the work lights in the back cabin as well as a light check button here of all of the lights on the vehicle and our emergency lights is right here. Now the steering wheel is uh, adjustable and you simply unlock the lever and it can go back forth up and down you know you can adjust it pretty much for any size driver if you want so that's very convenient. You have your city horn and you have your highway horn which is very nice on our door we pretty much get the same controls like we have on any door we have electronic adjustments of our side view mirrors as well as electronic locking on both doors now keep in mind Peterbilt are actually quite notorious for you know locking the driver out of the vehicle so make sure that you have your keys with you at all times so that you don't lock yourself out of the vehicle and have to call a locksmith or you know bend your doors open to get back in the vehicle keep that in mind next we have led lights here right above our driver with a turnable led light here reading light if you want and a brighter led light here as well we also have the same lights above our passenger seat but when it comes to storage you have a little bit of a storage compartment with some bungee protectors here to you know not allow things to move out you also have another storage compartment a little bit deeper right above our driver here for you know some bill of ladings documents we also have more storage right here right in the center there is also a compartment here that you can use to put your cb radio but peterbilt have actually provided a cb radio holder now this particular model doesn't have a cb radio in it and in one of the comments i received on the 2024 model is to explain how you adjust or how you connect the cb radio i personally have I've had a CB radio when I was hauling oversized loads in Pennsylvania, but I am not really an expert when it comes to, you know, adjusting and setting up your CB radio. So if any of you know, please go ahead and address that uh, to the driver. But moving forward, we have, you know, more storage above the passenger side right there, as well as the same storage compartment above the passenger side, like we have here on the driver's side. In this particular model we have these very nice comfortable leather seats you know they're not heated cool anything fancy like that but you do get you know up and down adjustments and you do get a power lumbar extension here on the seat 
Now you can also move the seat forward and backward manually by simply pulling on the lever below and adjust it, you know, to your needs or to your wants, desires, whatever. In addition to that, you also get a very nice adjustable armrest that you can, you know, you can simply turn on this right here to adjust the height of the armrest and this very nice uh, embroidered Peter belt emblem here on the headrest of the seat, which is, you know, it makes it looks nice. But now let's go towards the sleeper compartment of the Peterbilt and explore that a little bit. Okay, so now I'm sitting here on the lower bunk bed of the sleeper compartment of the 579 Peterbilt and it's a very spacious sleeper cabin here in the back. You got plenty of space for, you know, for even some TV, some microwaves or whatnot for any items to make the driver experience more pleasurable, so to say. You got an eight foot tall ceiling here in the back and the beds are actually the biggest and the most comfortable beds that you will get in any Peterbilt model. The lower bunk bed is 85 inches long and 46 inches wide, whereas the upper bunk bed is 82 inches long with only 36 inches wide. Now there is a catch with the upper bunk bed that we'll get to in a second, so stay tuned for that. And you also get a nice blackout cover here behind the seats in cases you want to, you know, sleep sometimes uh, during the day. Let's start with the passenger side. You have this huge column of uh, storage capabilities. At the top you have a little bit of storage uh, space here, which I believe is intended for the uh, top bed bunker. But if you're driving solo, you can actually use that as well. So you have storage there. You have a huge storage closet right here in the center. This is one thing I'm not really fond of. Instead of doors, you get these click on covers with these buttons that you simply push on and you close like that which I get it it's to maybe save on space but I don't know how convenient this is maybe it is I don't know but anyway you get a very deep closet compartment right here where you can you know you can hang clothes you can put on shelves you can put the clothes on shelves which is again very good right below that you get a built-in refrigerator the refrigerator is actually quite a good size you know for maybe not for two drivers but for one driver i believe is uh, sufficient you also get a ice maker in the refrigerator as well which is very nice you close that and right below the refrigerator you get it another pull-out drawer where you can store shoes socks or whatever you want clothes you know condiments again it's up to the driver you can close that on the driver's side starting again from the top you have the same storage compartment like we had on this side right below that we have a space for our microwave and you also have a strap here to secure the microwave so it doesn't run away uh, but you also have a 12 volt outlet uh, in the back there to connect your microwave right below that you have yet another reading led reading light here and this center console here if you may is where you also have your climate control here for the back and you can also lock the doors from here from the back. You can turn on and off the lights in your sleeper if you want. And you can actually also control the radio, which is, you know, kind of convenient. So you don't have to get up from bed and turn off the radio. Next to that, you have a small door for your condiments here. It's a storage compartment for your condiments. A smaller storage compartment. Two more 12-volt uh, outlets on this side with two cup holders. And you also get a small work uh, area station here, or you can simply eat on that uh, which i wish they actually included a pull out drawer or something like that that you can use as a table that would have been nice right below that again with this click on cover you have yet another storage unit for clothes shoes whatever you want on this side you have access to the window and you simply turn the knob to open and close it you have vents here in the back as well as you can see i'm sitting on some safety netting that you can use if you have some stuff here while you're driving you can put the safety netting so the stuff doesn't fly forward on this side like we saw on the passenger side you have access to your vent which again i wish it was a window but it's not but moving towards the top here we have a top bunk bed uh, as you can see and I've heard many drivers complain about the design of the top bunk beds. Now, as you can see, it's not completely lifted. It's a partially uh, divided top bunk, which means that you can unlock it by simply pulling on this strap here. It unlatches and then you simply lay it down like that. And in order for you not to get hurt whenever you're climbing it, there is a ladder here that you simply unlock like this. 
put it down and now you have access to the top bunk and there is a mattress and another safety netting there as well and i've heard actually drivers complain that the mattress you know that comes with the beatables it's because it's folded kind of like cut in half and folded over so that whenever you raise the bunk bed it will fit it's actually not that comfortable personally i don't have any experience with that but i i actually believe those stories now again for convenience features you do have a second bunk bed maybe you can switch off with the driver you know with your co-driver so that it'll be fair for both i guess but at the top again you have access to both windows uh, which are again twist knobs right there and you also have the safety netting in case you put something and it's moving around or whatnot but you also get a very nice uh, embroidered peterbilt emblem stitching right there in the back you also get vents in the back as well as well as two speakers up there in the ceiling in addition to that you also get led lights uh, throughout the entire cabin here of the sleeper not only on the top but also on the inside here as well as behind me the reading light that we saw earlier and if you want to fold up again the top bunk first you gotta fold up the stairs you simply lift that in place and lift the top bit in place as well you can actually access the storage compartment here from the inside as well and you simply do that by pulling on the red latch down here and you lift the bed and now you have access to the entire bottom compartment here including your heating system as well as the entire storage compartment which again like i said about earlier since we're missing a access door on the passenger side then you have things stored all the way to the other side it could be really inconvenient to reach over and like you know shimmy yourself through here uh, to reach stuff so i don't know if it's just a design flaw or that's how the customer uh, ordered it i have no idea but to close it you simply close it but that concludes our video for today i really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe and share button down below it would really help the channel grow and i would really appreciate it but if you want to see more amazing trucker content hit any of the thumbnails right there and i'll see you in our next one